Um, okay, so what is heat and what would you use to describe it? So you said vibrations, thermal reactions, kinetic energy. Okay, so let's say that I've got a cup of coffee and it's hot. What does that mean? Like, what is heat? Molecules are moving around. Okay, yes. So when you think of heat, what really is happening is molecules are moving around. And if you think of something cold, molecules are just moving more slowly. Cold is actually just the absence of heat. Cold is nothing in and of itself, except that there is no heat there. Just like darkness is just the absence of light. Cold is really just a word that means no heat, which is kind of weird to think about. So it's not really anything in and of itself. It's just nothing. I don't know. Think about it. It's kind of cool. Um, so how do things get warmer or colder? Okay, so I'm going to click on this link. I don't know. I want to share this tab so y'all can see it. Um, so if we make something hotter and you look at the atoms, what you'll notice is that they are basically just moving faster. And when you are colliding more, you're creating friction. Um, and that friction releases heat. You know, like if you rub your hands together, you can feel that heat. When atoms collide more often, they create heat. And when atoms, when I make it colder and they collide less often, they're moving slower, less heat is a byproduct. The cool thing is that actually everything is moving. Did you know that every material thing that you can touch or even like the particles in the air that you can't feel, everything is moving, even things that are very cold. Scientists have yet to figure out how to make things stop moving completely. Like vibrations are still happening, even if you're very, very cold. And so um, scientists are trying, it's like an experiment, like can we make something, an atom stop moving and produce zero heat? Everything is producing some heat because everything is moving a little bit, but they're moving less and less and less as you get colder. And there's this, this temperature called Kelvin. And when you can reach zero degrees Kelvin, you've stopped moving. And no scientist has been able to reach zero degrees Kelvin yet. Um, um, everything is actually moving to some extent, which I think is so interesting. Everything actually has heat. We've never actually interacted with something that is completely cold, meaning there's no heat there. Um, there is some movement for all particles. So that's kind of what heat is. And thermochemistry is the study of heat and the study of heat transfer. So I think it's really interesting um, this is one of my favorite topics in chemistry, although I still have so much to learn about it. So thermochemistry just studies how heat is transferred. So when something changes, like let's say that you go from a liquid to a gas, that heat, how the heat transfers there, or let's say that a reaction happens and something oxidizes, um, studying how the heat moves. And thermochemistry can help predict different things like what types of reactions can occur. So let's look at this image here. Um, we have two chemicals reacting together here. And if you notice, um, this is hydrogen and this is oxygen. And I've just kind of drawn them. So if you look down here, this is what you see when you read it. But if you're more visual, this is what is actually kind of happening. So you have two H2 molecules, meaning H2, two together. And there's two sets of them. And one oxygen molecule um, that's bonded together. And together they react to make water, okay? And so when two chemicals react, sometimes heat is given off and sometimes heat is absorbed. And we're gonna talk about what those are called. So every time um, here, basically in order to form this, what has to happen is those bonds have to break apart. It's like Legos. If you want to make water, then you have to break apart the bonds in order to reform them. And when these bonds are broken, it's always an endothermic process, meaning heat is absorbed. You have to put heat into the bonds in order for them to break apart. So bonds are always broken on this side of the equation. And when bonds are formed, heat is always released. So when bonds are broken apart, heat is absorbed into that molecule. And when bonds are formed, heat is released out of the molecule. But what you look at is the overall, um, the, what, at the end of the day, you're looking at the overall reaction. So the question is, is this, is the heat that's absorbed more 
then the heat that's released. And if it is more, then the whole reaction will be endothermic. Or if the heat that's released is more than the heat that's absorbed, the entire reaction will be exothermic. So you kind of look at it as a whole by adding them together or taking the difference between them and seeing which one is greater. And if overall it's exothermic, you know, it's going to be exothermic. Or if overall we've absorbed more energy into the system, it's going to be endothermic. Um, so if you look at this reaction, if you see, we put this number on the right hand side. And that means that overall it was an exothermic reaction because it's on the right hand side with the product. It's an exothermic reaction. Energy is released into the surroundings. Um, okay, and here's an example of an endothermic reaction. I didn't have time to draw the molecules on this one, but if you notice on this one, do you see how the numbers are on the left side? So that means that energy was put into the reactants. It was endothermic. Um, so up here, this is exothermic because the, num the 482 kilojoules are on the right side. And here it's endothermic because the 91.52 kilojoules are on the left-hand side. So you can kind of look at this. If energy is on the right side, the reaction released heat. If energy is on the left side, the reaction overall absorbed heat. Um, does that kind of make sense so far? Um, ask questions if you have any questions. So now we're going to talk about three laws. So today, thankfully, there's no math. Yay, no math. And then next week, there will be some math. Um, we're just going to talk about the three laws of thermodynamics, and I think these laws are so interesting. So the first law is called the law of conservation of energy, and that means that energy is not created or destroyed. So if you think about it, think about heat. Think about that hot cup of coffee that you have. That heat, over time, that hot cup of coffee, um, like, it gets colder, right? So that heat leaves the cup of coffee. But that heat actually goes somewhere else. Heat is always um, flowing from one place to another, but you can't create it or destroy it. You can only um, you can only change forms from it. Um, so energy is not created or destroyed in chemical reactions. It only changes forms. So when you talk about like a cup of coffee that you have, that could be like your system, and you have to define the system. So a system is a precisely defined portion of the universe that's being studied. So if I talked about the system being my cup of coffee, the surroundings are the rest of the universe. Like, okay, this cup of coffee, and then the rest of the world is the, um, the surroundings, and the heat is leaving my cup of coffee. So it's an exothermic kind of process. The heat is leaving my cup of coffee and being released into the environment, right? If I had a cold, um, iced coffee, like a frappuccino, over time it gets warm. That will be endothermic because heat is going into the frappuccino and warming it up and like it's becoming less and less cold over time. Um, okay, so in other words, energy that is lost by one body is always gained by another body. It doesn't like just get deleted or destroyed. Okay, so let's look at this picture. You have a, a red hot block and then a colder block. What is going to happen when those two blocks touch? Oh, that's true, Brenna. The bigger cup of coffee you have, the faster your drink gets cold. It's kind of sad because I like having large cups of coffee. But um, what's going to happen when the red and the blue block touch? One of them is hot, one of them is cold. What do y'all think? Okay, equilibrium, steam. So what do you mean by equilibrium? What's gonna happen when you have something hot and something cold like mesh together? Okay, the cold will become hot. Heat transfer, okay? Yes, let's click the next so that y'all can see this here. Let's see, hold on. Okay, if, if there's, so which one has more energy? The hot one or the cold one? Yes, the hot one has more energy, right? So energy is going to move from the area of high concentration into the area of low concentration. So what's going to happen when they mesh together is they are ultimately all going to reach the same temperature. And that's what happens um, like in so many circumstances is that heat wants to um, like disperse out. So basically all of the atoms in the hot one are bumping together 
And when they interact with the cold one, they're going to bump into the cold one and that's going to speed it up, right? So if I'm going slowly, but something hits me, I'm going to start moving faster. And then I might hit something else and they start moving faster and it all cascades and everything disperses out evenly so that everything is the same temperature. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about enthalpy. Enthalpy is a fancy word for heat energy. So when you see the word enthalpy, that literally just means the total heat energy in the system. And we call that, um, we call that H. So enthalpy can't be directly measured. If I'm like, okay, how much heat energy is in this pin right here? You can't really measure that, but you can measure how it changes. So see this delta sign right here? Delta is a fancy word for change. Every time you see delta, you can substitute that by saying change in. So delta H is change in enthalpy. Delta H is change in enthalpy. So you can measure how it moves. Um, and so a change is meaning like you take the final end result and subtract the initial result. So you take the enthalpy of the products and subtract the enthalpy of the reactants. So if I'm like measuring a change in temperature, I take the final minus the initial temperature, right? A change in enthalpy is taking the products, the energy of the products and subtracting the energy of the reactants. Um, and so I wanted to give this analogy here. Let's say that you check your bank account and you're really excited because you have $100 in your bank account. And then you log on at the end of the day and you check your bank account and you have $250 now in your bank account. What had to have happened for that change to have occurred? How could that have happened? What, what must have happened? Someone added $150, payday, right, okay. Uh, someone or you put that money into your account, right? There's no other way for that to have been the case unless someone put money into your account, okay? So that means that if you take the final minus the initial, you would have had $150 put into your account, right? To make your total 250. And that is um, what an endothermic reaction is, okay? So money is being, so if I have a cold frappuccino um, and it's warming up because my room is warmer than the frappuccino, Money is being put into the bank account. Heat is being put into the frappuccino, right? And the, the enthalpy of the products must be greater than the enthalpy of the reactants for that to have happened. Um, energy is being put into the system and being absorbed by, that, by the products. Um, let's say that we have a different situation. I check my bank account and I have $100. And at the end of the day, I check my bank account and I have $25 total. What must have happened for that change to have occurred? Identity theft. Okay. If you want to blame someone else, maybe <laughs> somebody stole your $75. You spent $75. Something happened to that money and we can create a lot of situations for why that happened. Um, but if you probably just had to pay some bills, right? So you had to have taken money out of your account, right? So if you take the final 25 minus the initial, you get negative 75, negative 75. So someone must have removed 75 from your account, or you could say that you gave 75 away to someone else, right? And that is an exothermic reaction. In an exothermic reaction, you have a negative delta H because your final energy is lower than your original energy, if that makes sense, or your heat energy. So money is being withdrawn and given off to the surroundings. Um, the enthalpy of the products is less, like $25 is less than $100. Energy is given off and released. So that's what we're doing in thermochemistry is we're measuring the flow of heat. Heat is being put into different accounts and you have a final and an initial. Um, so there's a picture of that happening again. Um, so an exothermic reaction has a negative because we started off with $100 and ended off with 25. With an endothermic, we started off with $100 and ended up with $250. So there's a picture of that happening. Um, 
So now we're going to talk about the uh, second law, which is entropy, which is one of my favorite topics to talk about, but we won't get too deep into it because we're almost done. But entropy is like how random or disordered something is. And we use S for entropy and a delta S for change in entropy. So it's a measure of how random something is. So if you look here, this would be a low entropy and this would be high entropy because entropy is chaotic. It's how random or dispersed something is. This is looks pretty organized and this is disorganized or disordered. So it's a higher entropy state. If you put an ice cube of, in your glass of water over time, it's going to melt and turn into water. The ice cube is more ordered because the atoms are closer together and the liquid is more disordered because the atoms are more spread apart. If you have a chessboard and you randomly pour um, that chessboard, like dump them onto the board, what are the odds that they would come out looking like this? What do you think? Do you think it's impossible? If you dumped out your chessboard pieces on a chessboard, if you did it a billion times, do you think it would ever? Okay, let's say that you did it for infinity. Your whole life for infinity is to dump pieces until they land like that. Do you think at some point they would? Maybe they would, right? But if you were to walk into a room with a chessboard like that, you would know that it was not an accident because the chances are so low <clears throat> that you can basically conclude that it's not going to happen. Um, and the, the situation is like you hadn't set them up like that before. Like you just are randomly dumping it until they dump in this ordered way. Um, so when you see a chessboard that's set up like this, this is an example of low entropy because they're organized. Over time, they will become more disorganized, just like your room over time becomes more disorganized. Um, the universe always moves to a higher entropy state. So today we have more entropy in our universe than we did yesterday. It's just a fact. It's the second law of thermodynamics, which is so cool. So the energy started somewhere and um, was the most ordered that it ever would have been. And every day since then, it's becoming disordered every single day. And there's no way overall for the universe to not be more disordered than it was the day before. It's becoming more disordered over time. And you only have so much energy. So that energy is getting more and more disordered over time. You can't just pump in more energy when you're talking about the entire universe, right? I just think it's so cool. This is another picture of heat transfer. We're going to skip that, but you can look at that if you want. This is what the atoms are doing. Um, okay, when you go from solid to liquid to gas, this is higher entropy. When you go from gas to liquid to solid, this is lower entropy or higher enthalpy. Um, so you can reverse entropy, but you have to pump energy in for that to happen. Just like a refrigerator is keeping it cold, but you have to pump energy into the refrigerator for the refrigerator to keep things cold. So you're using energy from somewhere else. Um, this is another interesting thing, and then I'll let y'all go. But this is the, uh, a picture of kind of what's happening. All of our world basically operates from the energy from the sun. So the sun comes in and it gives us all sorts of forms of energy. And what happens is we use it, like light is being reflected, photosynthesis happens, uh, solar energy, we're using it. And then we give off the leftover wasted heat and it goes off and radiates off of the earth. And that wasted heat, it's still heat and energy, but it's not very usable anymore. It's like some forms of energy can't really be used very well. So we take and absorb energy from the sun and then we give it off again, but it's disordered and chaotic and higher entropy. And this picture kind of shows that. Um, this is just showing the same thing, energy movements and all of that. Um, and we, I'm kind of repeating some of this stuff again, actually, enthalpy. We're gonna talk more about enthalpy of combustion next week. So that's it for today. Here's some cool videos here if you want to look at them. And if you have any questions or thoughts, I'm going to read your chat in a minute. And, um, and then y'all can ask any questions that you want. Entropy is chaotic evil. Basically, entropy is the villain of the story of the universe. Okay. Your room has high entropy right now. Yeah. Um, is entropy a bad thing? Is that what you're asking? I mean, I guess it kind of is, but it is what it is. Bye, Mark. Have a good day. 
If you read this, then do you know yellow has super armor? I don't get it. I hope this was a little bit interesting to y'all. Let me know if y'all need help with anything. Bye, Velvet. Have a good day. What's your life hack, Daniel? The universe is expanding. Yeah. Um, it's just interesting. And yeah, I guess it could be interpreted as a bad thing over time that it's becoming, I mean, it, it's becoming more disordered every day. You need that thermochemistry for the snow six. Yeah, we need heat to be moved into the cold states. Yes. Bye, Selena. <clears throat> Yeah. Bye, Joshua. Have a good day. Think on entropy when you are doing your life today. Think about how the world is increasing entropy. Can you get, yeah, you can get on the mic. I think you can just unmute yourself. So my life hack <laughs> is yesterday I was listening to the Minecraft album because there's an, so it's not like a Minecraft weird little cringy rap album or something like that. It's, and I'll put it in the chat, it's the soundtrack to the game, um, but it's like really soothing. And I listen to it while I'm working on school because it's just all instrumental. But, but I'm talking about this again to people in the chat. I was thinking about it yesterday and my quote unquote life hack is that I am going to go and do yard work while listening to the Minecraft soundtrack so that it feels like I am in the game, if that makes sense. I'm gonna go out and that... just like start sawzawing like brush and stuff <laughs> while listening to the soundtrack. And I'm like, nice. That is like, awesome. Um, I, I used to play Minecraft. I haven't been playing it recently, but I need to listen to the soundtrack. I'm glad that you put it in the chat, Minecraft Volume Alpha, and I'm glad that you're doing yard work. So I think that's awesome. Y'all listen to, if y'all are into Minecraft, listen to that um, thing that Daniel dropped in the chat. And do y'all have a book club? Y'all should uh, tell people about it. There's a book club happening related to this class. And back uh, talking about the Minecraft stuff, I don't even play Minecraft. Like I haven't played in years now. A teacher is hosting. I just like the soundtrack. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, go ahead, Daniel. I think it was an accident. Oh, um, but yeah, I, I I don't even play it, but I just like the music. And I was telling people yesterday about it, and they're like, "I'm, I'm doing that. <laughs> like the next okay. time I go outside and work on stuff, I'm going to use that." <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Yeah. Minecraft just stays with you for life. Tristan, that's a great question. You said, you said you see how the universe is expanding, but like what is expanding the universe? So the universe, I mean, no matter what perspective you're seeing from, the universe started somewhere, right? Um, it started and it was as organized as it ever will be. And so um, if it wasn't organized, already then it would, we probably would be in a different place than we are today but the universe started and it was as organized as it ever would be and so we are just growing more and more disordered from that point it's as if you were given a clean room at on day one and day 1000 or however many over time that room becomes more and more disordered um and we can use the energy to clean it up like i can go um like decrease the, um, like I can go clean things up, but I'm using energy to do that. So overall, the energy is becoming more chaotic, but I like, just like I can keep my refrigerator cold and keep it organized and cold in there. I'm having to pump energy in from the universe. And over time, that energy is being used up and spent out because we don't have some magical being pumping energy into the universe. We started with a set amount of energy and we're using it now. Um, so it's like you started with a million dollars and you can spend it however you want and you can try to save it and invest it and do this different stuff. Well, not invest it, but you can just save it. But over time, you're gonna lose th that money or it's gonna, I don't know if that's the best analogy, but the energy is becoming more and more, uh, the entropy of the universe is becoming more disordered and chaotic. Anyways, that's, that's the best way I can explain it. I'll have to think of some videos. You said that brings another question. 
Right. Okay. That's a different question though, because what we're studying is what we have right now. And everybody would agree, no matter what perspective, is that we started with a huge set amount of energy. And it's like, what's happening with it from there type thing. Um, but now the, the universe that we're in energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. It can only change form. So the universe that we're in currently now follows that law. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are getting super deep, which is why I do like this topic because you get all these weird questions. It's like, wait, what? Like, what's happening? Let's, let's get outside of our universe. What's outside of it? What's outside of the end of space? It's pretty crazy. It's really crazy. But chemistry is crazy because atoms are so small. And when you think of it comparatively to how big we are and then to how big like our planet is and then to how big the sun is and then the universe, it's like, how do we even wrap our minds around that? Like, anyway, you guys can all leave by the way if you want to. I'm just talking. So I'm just talking if y'all are interested. There's no pressure to stay. I watched a video the other day of how our brains actually can't compute um, what a thousand is. Like when you say a thousand, it's hard for our brain to actually wrap our minds around that. Like you kind of come up with something, but think about billions or trillions of atoms. It's like, there's no way that our brain can even wrap our minds around like something to understand that. Chemistry is awesome. And I hope that y'all have a great day thinking about chemistry. I know, we literally just cannot compute. Y'all are awesome. I love teaching this class. Yeah, it's impossible to understand, but it's important to like remind yourself of it and study it so that you understand like kind of your place in the universe. Sometimes it's easy to just not like remember that. And it's so interesting to think about. Yes, it's not physically possible to completely wrap our minds around it though. But it, it keeps you like thankful and it keeps you like curious about the world. It's like, I want to understand this, you know, to become a lifelong learner. As long as cloning never becomes possible, you're cool with chemistry. OK, I'll keep you updated because I think that some cloning has happened to like animals. So I don't want you to 